Well, hello people, welcome. It is Thursday Q&A Live with me, Phil. And as you can tell, if you haven't been here for a few weeks and we're not in the studio, we're actually out and about on, uh, on, uh, on the road at the moment, traveling. So I've just stopped. Uh, we're in a lovely, sunny little place in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of Portugal. Uh, but I don't know if this is gonna stay live or if you'll be able to see or hear me. So do let me know if you see any issues with the connection, but hopefully we'll be all right. We've, we've had all right luck on doing this recently so listen it's digital dj tips it's me phil morse uh, it, despite the fact i'm not in the studio and i'm not surrounded by all the dj gear i have this and this is where i can help you for the next 45 minutes or so my job here is to basically help you with all your djing issues whether you are stuck with worrying about the next piece of dj gear to buy or maybe you uh, you want to build your music collection and you're not sure why, or maybe there's a particular DJ technique you want to talk about, or you want to talk about live streaming or getting back to gigs, or uh, indeed if you just want to talk about how to get your name out there and how to promote yourself now that gigs are coming back. Whatever it is, I'm here to help. I'm here to talk to you for the next 45 minutes or so, or until this 80% laptop battery runs flat, uh, either or, or until the connection just kicks us off. Uh, so lots of variables, but basically uh, Thursday Q&A live continuing as ever. Did I say Tuesday tips at the beginning? I hope I didn't. I hope I've got over that little faux pas, uh, but it is Thursday, I'm sure. Uh, Thursday Q&A live with me, Phil. So welcome. Uh, we are uh, we are in the middle of Portugal. So yeah, I was telling you that before, before we get started, I kind of like give you a bit of a bit of a backstory about where we are. We've driven from uh, the kind of inland southern part of Portugal. We're, we're slowly heading our way north. Uh, in the camper van at the moment the camper van's over there all being sorted out at the moment we've literally just arrived somewhere there we go there's everyone getting themselves sorted out uh, i've just crept off to a little corner to do thursday q a live and we are uh, we're on a, a family family break a few weeks moving around portugal maybe northern spain maybe uh maybe um wherever it takes our fancy really so that's why i'm not in the studio but uh you know thursday q a live hanging out with you guys and girls Who's going to say no to that wherever I am in the world? So, all right then, hashtag ask, please. Hashtag ASK uh, if you would like your questions to be featured because as we move on, uh, I'm going to only be uh, looking at those as the, as, the, as the questions come in and as the hour moves on, they'll, they'll be the ones I'll be, I'll be looking at uh, as a preference. So, hello to Mixmaster G in the Netherlands who says it's windy but sunny, so it's good to know that. Uh, Housemaster J as well over there in Germany. Modish Mark in Seattle, hello to you. Hope the heat waves left you a little bit of breathing space now up there. Uh, hello to Peter, who says it's uh, sunny and dry where you are. Uh, Martin saying hello. Uh, and to Fergoot saying hello. Hope you're enjoying the beautiful Southern Europe. Yes, we really are having a great time. Uh, having a great time on the road. It's nice to, when the kids are on holiday, to take them away from uh, the town and, uh, and show them a bit of the world. That's what we're doing. Uh, so Technobeat says, I barely have any data left. We had to, we had to literally go chasing data for our router um, because uh, we had no data left either. So, you know, the fun of being on the road, but we, we should be all right now. Uh, so uh, my wife says I slipped on my keyboard there. I'm not sure what uh, she slipped on. Hello, Eva. Oh, okay, hello Eva, right, okay, I see. That's a comment from, from my wife and she's correcting her spelling, which is just as well because she's the one who ends up correcting most of the spelling on most of the courses that you see on Digital DJ Tips, making them all look nice. Right, first proper question. Modish Mark, hi Phil, I love your roaming DJ sets. Uh, I was wondering just how loud you play when you're on location and if you vary the volume based on people being near, cheers. Uh, well, thank you for loving them to start with. If you don't know about our roaming DJ sets, uh, basically what I've been doing is um, the, the Thursday Q, the Thursday Q&A, there, there we go again. The Sunday, um, Balcony Beats live streams, uh, I've been doing on the road. So I've been doing them, they started in lockdown where it was just, uh, you know, something to do while we were in lockdown. Uh, but then since lockdown has lifted, we've been able to do those kind of on the road and um, it's been good fun. And so that's what we've been doing. We've been doing our uh, Balcony Beats live streams from wherever, wherever I lay my hat, literally. Uh, and last week, last Sunday, just gone, uh, we did it from, uh, like a reservoir in the middle of nowhere. It was really good fun. So um, that's that's what we've been doing. And the question is, how loud do you play your music when you're doing these? And the answer is, it really depends. Uh, because look, if I'm somewhere, like I'm, it's very late at night and I'm somewhere where people are sleeping or whatever, I'm gonna keep it turned down. But what I found is, people are actually quite into the idea. They notice, they ask you what you're doing uh, and they, they're quite into the idea. So for instance, um, uh, on Sunday just gone, I was in the, it was in a reservoir in the middle of nowhere. I'll try and show you a picture of it in a second. 
and um, I was uh, I had two speakers and a, a bass speaker so we could go quite loud and we started off quite quiet and then as the set went on people were giving thumbs up who we were walking past with their dogs and their kayaks and sunbathers and stuff and we ended up turning it up as loud as it would go uh, so I, I think it just depends upon the situation to be honest but I think people are a little bit more into these things than you might think they are uh, so there is the uh, there is the um, the live stream from Sunday there's me looking dashing in my shorts uh, this is on YouTube by the way you can search balcony beats for more 37 because it was the 37th edition uh, and uh, yeah we just I do it, Steve does it, um, uh, Ben does it. We just like to play our music on a Sunday. That's why we do it as a DJ school. You know, we are, we're not teaching, we're not teaching, we're not doing tricks, we're not playing the music we think you guys like. We're just opening our record boxes and playing what we want to hear for an hour on a Sunday. So that's why we do it. Uh, and in answer, in answer to your question, as we've been doing it uh, in public more and more, I've been getting less and less worried about it and just turning it up. I mean, it's only for an hour, right? Uh, but great question. Thank you for that one. Uh, the next live question then, and if you want to ask a question, by the way, wherever you're watching, YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, uh, wherever you are, if you want to ask a question, then you can do so. Just do it in the comments. Hashtag ASK. Hashtag ask, uh, please, just to make sure that I get to see your question. Uh, the next live one then is from, uh, this is from uh, Abhishek, Abhishek, who says, how to climb up the lineup from an opening set DJ to a headliner DJ? It's a great question. Well, look, to start with, if you've got yourself an opening set at a festival or in a club or whatever, well done. Uh, well done, Abhishek. That's great. Uh, but how do you climb up the lineup? Well, it depends on the kind of venue, really. If you're playing a local venue where people are going to go out, whether there's name DJs on or not, then you climb up that ladder by being consistent, by being professional, by doing a good job of your warm up, by not trying to steal the show, by getting to know everyone in the venue and everyone in the town and just doing your dues, earning it. And in the end, the main DJ in that club or in that venue is, or that festival won't turn up one day. And that'll be your chance to step into his or her shoes. Uh, and then once you've got that slot, it's harder to kick you out of it. So that's one way if you want to just be at the top of the bill locally. But if you want to be touring, if you want to be DJing elsewhere, away from your hometown where people uh, don't know who you are, then your name has to do the selling for you and the best way to get your name to do the selling for you is to release music and now there's a lot of djs who've only ever had one hit but they're still djing all around the world because their name is associated with the record they made and therefore promoters feel that they can book them and that they will get their money back because enough people will recognize the name uh, and like the track they made to come out so there's two answers there if you want to be touring make music if you want to be at the top of the bill in your town do the dues play a lot of those gigs lower down the bill and it will happen it's a question of, of when not if that's that's for certain uh, so uh, Fergus is just saying thank you for spending time with us uh, I'm very very privileged to spend time with you if you didn't turn up uh, then uh, I wouldn't be able to do this so thank you to you for coming people uh, we are talking about anything you want to talk about on this Thursday Q&A live um, I'm not gonna make any apologies for the wobbly camera or the um, the, the, the laptop microphone because that's what you get when we're out the studio so uh so all good but um but that's what's going down here today we're still doing the usual thursday q a but we're on the road uh so kevin says it's raining in scotland hope you're having a good holiday phil yeah we are thank you kevin uh dj jonas which new equipment do you expect pioneer dj to release this year so it puts me in a bit of a weird situation when you guys and girls ask these questions because, of course, we get to hear sometimes stuff that, that isn't public about what's coming up. What I would say is look at the lineup and look at what needs replacing. Look at what is oldest and look at what technology they've already started replacing. So we've seen from Pioneer DJ within the last 12 months the CDJ 3000s, which are, of course, a much more powerful standalone player than the ones they made before so without giving any games away just think about that think about well they've started to replace the standalone kit what might they do next and you probably wouldn't be too far off the mark there well one thing i think we can guess they're not going to be replacing is the ddj 1000 because to start with it's a near perfect dj controller anyway but secondly they've just released a special edition of it that costs a lot of money so you would expect them to not you know, release a DDJ 1000 Mark II this time next month. I don't have insider knowledge on that, by the way. So they, they might do for all I know, but I would say probably not. Um, so it's bloody freezing in Blighty, says Sai. Sorry to hear that. Blighty being uh, the British name for it. Well, Blighty is England, isn't it, right? It's not the UK. Take me back to dear old Blighty. It's England. Um, but uh, 
cold there. Well, that's the summer for you in England, isn't it? Hello to Dr. Karen. Uh, hello to Tony Jacobson, uh, who says, hello, I'm in Bend, Oregano, USA. Uh, Duncan says, Phil, I have a quick question. How do I connect my Tractor Control S2 Mark III to my active or passive Vonix speakers? I tried connecting via RCA from controller to RCA on the back of the speaker, but no sound. Do I need to buy a RCA to XLR cable? Um, no, you don't need to do that. Um, and if you've got an RCA input on the back of the speaker, then that should work. Obviously, the best way to test this is to plug something else into the RCA speaker on the back of the cable of the uh, of the unit and see if that works. And if that works, then it's something about the DJ controller. You probably, you know, this might sound silly, Duncan, but you might just not have the master volume turned up or the booth volume turned up, whichever one it is that's on the RCAs. I think it's the master on an S4. Uh, but as long as your speakers are uh, active, you said passive and active there, but I, I, I gathered from what you said later on that they are active, which means they've got a built-in amplifier, uh, then RCA to RCA should be absolutely fine. Now, I would suspect there might just be a control you're missing on the S4, especially if it's new, like Control S4 is a new controller to you. Have a look there first and see if that helps you. Uh, so, um, <laughs> Jay Daniel uh, in Boston says, your beard game is looking good. Uh, as I've said, a bit of a running joke, I'm doing it to annoy Steve, who's, uh, who's not been quite so um, uh, welcoming of the whole fill with a beard idea since uh, I grew it a couple of years ago. I think mainly because he realises that it makes all our DJ courses immediately look like pre-Phil's beard. Uh, but I don't think anyone really minds that, uh, especially because we're re-recording them at a rate of knots anyway. Uh, but yeah, while we're camping, I'm going to grow it. I'm going to keep it growing. I'm going to come back looking like a, looking like a hipster with a huge beard. That's the aim anyway. Uh, so uh, AIM says, I've been having distortion issues with my Evermix box. Any ideas, please? Well, the, the best thing to do is just to turn it down a bit, turn the input down a bit. The Evermix box is a audio interface that you plug between your DJ controller and your phone. Uh, and that will let you then um, record your DJ set or even go live on, online uh, without needing to do anything else. Uh, and it's quite good. The little Evermix box is quite good at compensating for the volume if it's too high or too low but it can't work miracles so just whatever the input is you plugged into the evermix box keep that one turned down you know a good tip if you're recording your dj sets or if you're live streaming your dj sets is if your controller has got two outputs like a master and a booth output then plug one set of speakers into one of them like maybe the ones in the room where you're djing or the ones in your your bedroom or wherever and the other one plug in the live streaming or the recording device and then set the volume on that one and don't touch it and if you want to turn the speakers up or down on the, in the room use the other volume control because of course you get a volume control for booth and for master on a dj setup otherwise you have to leave the volume control where it is for the whole set uh, which is a little bit more limiting it could just be that you're kind of getting excited and turning the dj controller up and that's turning your live stream up and or your recording up and distorting it uh, so anyway that should help you with that one uh, aim uh, Darren says, I'm collecting the Pioneer XDJ XZ or XZ next week, so I'll be looking at doing a course soon. Uh, well, that's great. The complete DJ course uh, will be the one for you, Darren. The complete DJ course will uh, get you going at speed on that. Um, so Matt says, uh, I saw Native Instruments asking people what they would change on the Native Instruments X1. Uh, new hardware rumours. Interesting. Uh, we've not heard anything about that. Uh, but um, the X1 was a very popular controller from Native Instruments. It was a little, um, little kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Streamlined, uh, slimline, that's the word I'm looking for. A little slimline DJ controller uh, that is um, um, good to use alongside other DJ gear. So let's say you want to control a deck or two of tractor alongside a traditional Pioneer club setup. You take your laptop, you take this little controller, uh, and then you've got an easy way then of doing that without uh, smashing uh, all the gear down just to make your DJ gear fit. Now, I've got a very low resolution picture of the part of the, um, the X1 that I can quickly flick to here. Uh, best I could do sat at a table in a field. Uh, it looks like that. There you go. There's the X1. So uh, are they upda updating it? No idea. Not heard a word about that map. So, uh, so I don't know. Uh, right, so let's get some more of the live questions. Hashtag ASK, hashtag ask if you'd like to ask a question. I'll try my hardest to get to them all. This one is from Chris. Is it possible to connect an Evermix box for another Evermix question to the booth output on my DDJ 1000? Yes, exactly. That's funny enough, Chris. That was exactly what we were just talking about. And you certainly can do that. Uh, is it a good idea to download MP3 music from YouTube? No, it's not legal and you won't get the best quality files that way, Maximus. Um, 
So, uh, Tony, hi Phil, in Serato DJ Pro, is there a way to analyze new tracks while having my controller on and connected? The analyze feature only seems to appear if I turn my controller off. There isn't. The only way you can do it that I've found is by having the Serato Play plugin um, installed, which you can then analyze tunes when that's installed, but when you plug your DJ controller and it turns that off anyway. So the short answer to that question is no. And I never know why they do that. I mean, of course you can load a track onto the deck. So if you load a track onto a deck, it will analyze it there and then. Uh, but you should be analyzing ahead of time for that very reason, Tony. Um, right, it is, it is our Thursday Q&A live session with me, Phil, here. Uh, we are not in the studio if you've just joined us. We are in central inland Portugal. Uh, and we are, um, other than that, the same as normal uh, i'm here to help you uh, for a little bit shorter than normal 45 minutes uh, on these holiday broadcasts so the reason we're doing it is i'm on the road we're traveling at the moment uh, but in september we'll be back in the studio and we'll be back with uh, our tuesday tips live as well in september so don't worry about it we're not gone forever uh, joe in devon in the uk uh, it looks lovely and sunny there thank you for doing this during your holiday says joe it's a pleasure i did want to carry on doing something during the holidays i didn't want to just uh, you know i might forget how to do it that would have been terrible wouldn't it um, so Maximus says, all right, then what's the best spot to get free music? I guess it's, uh, it's uh, the best question to follow on from. Should I rip music from YouTube? Um, so if you type where to get legal uh, music free DJ into, uh, into um, a browser, uh, you will at the top of that browser window get the page I'm about to show you, which is this one here. 13 places to legally download free DJ music. Uh, and if you click on that, uh, it will take you to an article that was uh, put live uh, only a, about a year ago. So it's completely up to date, this article, uh, which will then talk you through all the places where you can still get music for absolutely nothing. Uh, and it's a good place to, to go if you're looking for a bit of inspiration or you are just feeling like you haven't got any money to spend on music at the moment, but you do want some new tunes. So just go to Digital DJ Tips, search legally download free DJ music on, on the site or just in Google and I'll post 13 places to find that music uh, will come up. Uh, the next question is from Arek who says, any info on Denon engine update so I can use it like Rekordbox loading tracks from a laptop? Yeah, I know what you mean. So you can have your laptop there and plug a lead into your Denon DJ gear, your Prime 2 or your Prime Go or your Prime 4 or your SC5000 or SC6000 and just play music in that way. I have no, I've no information on that and I don't know if they will ever do that. I mean, it would be good. It is a bit lame having to, to burn your music to or, or copy your music to a USB or an SD just to DJ, I find. It's one of the things I like about laptop DJ. You plug in, you do everything on the laptop, discover music, audition music, buy music, and then play music without this constant updating and syncing between uh, an SD card and a laptop. So I'd like to see that added, but I have no information on that. So this is someone on our Facebook group. By the way, if you're on the Facebook group, uh, you, we don't get to see your name, but don't worry. Um, we still get your comments through. I've got my first gig on the 7th of August, a week's time, eh? Doing a barbecue party for the family and it'll be the first time I've used my Denon DJ Prime 4. Any tips or advice you can give for my first gig? Uh, plan your music. So have a playlist of about twice the amount of music you need uh, and think hard about that music. And then don't bother trying to play from your whole library. Just play from that playlist. It'll make it a lot easier and a lot more fun uh, to only like be flicking through twice the number of tunes you need. So if you think you're gonna play for two hours and you're gonna play 40 tunes, Make a set of 80 tunes and play from that. Get some shade over your unit. It's very hard to read the screens on any DJ gear or laptop come to that, but your Denon DJ gear has got a screen. They're very hard to read when you're not in the shade, uh, which I discovered on that live stream I was showing you a minute ago at the weekend. Well, I say I discovered it. I knew it was going to be the case, but I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist the... Um, uh, the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The venue, that one. I'll just try and go back to it uh, to show you. This, this place here. I just couldn't resist it. I had to. Uh, I had to DJ in broad sunlight, but I wouldn't recommend it. It's. Uh, it was very, very hard to see the screen. There you go. I finally got the shot. The shot back there for you. Uh, so do get a you know a parasol or do it in the shade or something. Uh, so make it easy for yourself with the music. Get yourself in the shade, uh, and apart from that, you know your your DJ console is really simple to use. It's fun to use. Um, don't put too much strain on yourself. You know it's your first gig. Don't try and do anything too clever with the mixing. Just keep cut the gaps out. Keep the volume the same beginning to end. Uh, play the music that, that you want to play and smile a lot. Uh, and don't take it too seriously. You'll have a great time. I'm jealous of your first gig. Anyone on their first DJ gig, I'm really jealous of. 
uh, right at the beginning of your journey. That's cool. Uh, so uh, Fergu says, have you tried this virtual reality software called Vinyl Reality? Uh, it looks like you can do your mixing in VR. Uh, there is, there are several things. There's one called Tribe, T-R-I-B-E, Tribe VR, that, that partnered up with with, um, um, with Pioneer DJ, for instance. I'm not sold on virtual reality DJing, to be quite frank. DJing is a very tactile thing. You want to touch stuff. Um, there used to be some DJ systems that were just a big, like a TV screen that was laid flat and you they put some kind of camera underneath it to see where your hands were and you could control all the controls but it's not the same as DJing with real gear I mean why would you want to t use a touch screen or use virtual reality when you could do the real thing I mean the argument is well I can't afford Pioneer gear I can't afford the kind of stuff that I would need to uh, play on like CDJ 3000s so why not do it in virtual reality and I get that but look there's ways and means if you want to play on any kind of DJ gear to get the chance right uh, I, I don't know, I've, I've not tried VR DJing. Maybe I'd be sold on it if I tried it, but I've not tried it. So uh, my view is not so sure about that. Uh, there's flies blinking everywhere here. That's the fun of being outside. Flies in your face and ants up your leg. Um, so uh, Travis, greetings from Toronto. Uh, I now have a Denon DJ Go and a Soundbox 2 uh, with a backpack attachment. And I'm gonna get a GoPro and film me spinning sets while walking through Toronto's iconic neighborhoods and then driving out to other towns, maybe with a link to the tourist industry as well. Uh, my rave promotion is gaining good ground and I will use that to fuel an audience for the walking raves. We are blowing up. Well, that's just great to hear. And thank you for sharing the story, Travis, with you. And you're gonna have a Soundbox 2 speaker strapped to your back and presumably you're going to have your Denon DJ controller on like the old, um, like the old uh, ice cream ladies used to come round at the beach and that, uh, in, the, in, the, in the movie theatres years ago, right? Uh, so it's going to be like, like there on your front. Uh, I love it. Cool. Um, Matey the Great. Yes, it's a iconic DJ controller. You, go, you won't go wrong with that one. Modish Mark. Uh, thanks for the answer. You're very welcome, Modish Mark. I'm, that's what I'm here for. Uh, so, um, Facebook, uh, someone on Facebook is saying that on Den and DJ's Prime Gear, you can record through um, an external recorder while streaming. Uh, it's technically pirating music. Do you think this is a concern moving forward? Well, you know, if you want to pirate music, you're going to find a way of pirating music. So, no, I don't think it's a concern. It's not hard to pirate music and it never has been. Uh, and all DJ software and Den and DJ's standalone systems, they will all tap into streaming services like not spotify and apple music but tidal beatport beat source soundcloud go uh, and yes the official recording buttons are disabled on this software for licensing purposes but as you just said it's easy enough to plug a recorder in and record the music is that pirating yes it is should you do it the letter of the law says no does it happen of course it does you're never going to stop pirating music you're never going to stop drug smuggling you're never going to stop people dodging their taxes and you ain't ever going to stop pirating music so no i don't think it's any more of a concern moving forward than it ever has been uh so uh gm paolo says would you rather keep your music library on an external hard drive or in the laptop itself pros and cons i would always keep it on the laptop itself i just feel that uh laptops today have plenty of uh, room uh, you shouldn't need more music than you can store on a you know a, a half terabyte uh, ssd anyway and it's just one less thing to go wrong. It's one less lead to plug in. It's one less thing to be pulled out. Uh, uh, for me, I keep my music on my laptop. I have it backed up automatically to Dropbox uh, to keep it safe. Or I think I use Apple Drive, Apple Cloud now actually. Um, and I have, a, I do have an extra physical backup of the, but not only the music, but also the database from the DJ software. And that's something people overlook. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, and I have an extra backup somewhere. So I do have a hard drive, a separate drive, but that's just a backup in the top of the wardrobe. Um, when you back your music up, people, don't fall into the trap of only backing up the actual music files. Go to your software and find the folder that it keeps its database in normally it's in your my music or in your music folder it might be in your documents folder i think virtual dj might keep it in the documents folder but from memory but anyway find that folder and just back that up as well because that means if you do lose your laptop and you lose all your backups and so on um, you can get all your playlists back that you've made in your dj software and all the analysis your dj software has done like cue points and loops and key analysis and stuff will all still be there um, and that won't be lost uh, either. So just a little tip there. When you're backing up your music, back up your DJ software's database as well. Look in your My Music, My Music, um, your music or your documents folder uh, for that. Um, 
So what's happened to Joey from the Philippines? Joey is still our, um, so for those of you that don't know Joey, Joey is our tutor for our um, dance music formula course uh, and uh, spent many years writing and making videos for the website. Joey is off doing his own thing. He's not writing and making videos for the website anymore. However, he is still very much uh, the tutor in our dance music formula course. He's also one of the people helping us to audition the mixes people make uh, or to, or to um, quality control the mixes people make in our um, mixing uh, course, our, our, our um, pro mixtape formula that teaches you how to make mixtapes. Um, so Joey's still around, but he's just, he's freelance now. He's not full time doing stuff, which, which frees him up to do his other stuff. He, Joey's a producer. He likes making music. He's doing a lot more of that right now. Uh, so DJ Johnny Ice, thank you for welcoming me, welcoming me to your country. Uh, the next live question then is from DJ Kluby. Who says i did a wedding last saturday it went well but you can't please all the people all the time uh, i went with the bride's playlist but felt a bit deflated any advice right yes i can give you some advice here um when you're djing weddings you can't expect the bride and groom to know what music to play the best they can tell you is the music they like and the music they think they want to hear and give you a list of must play and must not play tracks and really your job is to find the best tracks to play that are not on either of those, that they're not on the, on the must play list and the, oh sorry, that are not on the, the, the don't play list while making sure you play the tracks that are on the must play list. The big chunk of tracks in the middle, that's down to you. So don't feel you can't do that. Uh, so, so sticking too closely to what you're told by bride and groom might be the reason that, you know, you, you tied your hands up a little bit too tightly and you couldn't do what you knew was the right thing there, DJ Kluby. Give yourself a little bit more leeway. Now, what to play at weddings is something we, we're not going to go into now because we could talk for a long time about it uh, and it's in our... Uh, it's in our um, mobile DJ blueprint course, of course. Uh, but, you know, maybe that's a, the root of your problem is not trusting yourself to play what you what you think is uh, is going to work. Um, so mate is saying um, on Rekordbox, it's, it's a subscription uh, and it's off putting. You can use Rekordbox 5, by the way, if you don't want to pay for the subscription. But yes, I agree. DJ software on a subscription with no option to buy, I think is uh, is bad. Um, so B says I've updated to the latest Tractor Pro 3 on my MacBook and the sound clips like mad. Is this a latency issue? It's driving me bonkers. So it's very hard to say for sure, but what you can do is go into your settings and slide the latency slider so that it's a, a higher setting and that might just fix it. But Sai, obviously without knowing all the ins and outs of your setup, I cannot uh, tell you more about that right now. Um, so this is from DJ Jonas. Hi Phil, which new courses are you gonna release at Digital DJ Tips? So we recently released the DJ Angelo course, which has done really, really well. And if you haven't looked at that one, I really recommend it, uh, which is all about how to mix hip hop, Latin, drum and bass, bass music, pop, um, but how to do it with it in a really, really cool modern style. Elements of scratching, elements of cue juggling, elements of using all the pads on your controller. Angelo's a very, very technical DJ. So if you want to learn kind of quick mixing, if you want to learn open format DJing, that's the one to look at. Uh, we have had, and you won't be surprised to hear this, um, plans for new DJ courses this year. Uh, I can't, I'm not at the moment able to tell you uh, the wonderful person that we are aiming to make a DJ course with this year, other than we can't because this wonderful person is in America and we are in Europe and Joe Biden is not letting us any of us grubby Europeans into the United States of America at all at the moment. We've been trying to get in since uh, end of May to record this course, but we can't. So as soon as there is a air window into East Coast USA, there's another clue for you, we'll be flying to uh, a big city uh, whose first four letters are the same first four letters of my name where this DJ resides um, and filming a course that we're extremely excited about but I can't tell you anymore we are excited guys it's going to be a belter uh, so we have got something else hopefully coming by the end of the year if we're allowed into the USA that's a big if at the moment uh, so uh, our next live question is from well, actually an answer for uh Cy from Mixmaster G who says upping the latency might fix your problem on tractor especially if it's an M1 laptop that you're using. Uh, hello to Ilias in Greece. Uh, so this is S question from S on YouTube. Uh, it seems harder and harder to find good music or at least uh, music I like for my sets. 
Uh, what would you advise to refresh my perspectives or taste in music? What I advise everyone, which is get onto a streaming service. If you're not already on a streaming service, get onto a service like I use Spotify, even though I can't actually use it in my DJ. I just buy the tracks I want. Um, and start listening to uh, artists, listening to stuff. Forget your DJ and just listen to stuff that you like the sound of. Uh, and clicking that like button. Uh, and then once a week, go and listen to everything you've clicked the like button on. Uh, and if there's anything in there you think, actually, I'd like to DJ with that, stick it in another list called DJ to buy or something. Uh, and then when you're ready, go and buy everything in that DJ to buy list. Now, there's two things that happen here. Uh, one, you're starting to hear new music all the time. Uh, two, you are auditioning that music. So you're going through, you're splitting how you discover music right down the middle. You're splitting it down the middle and saying, I'm going to listen to anything. Don't care about DJing, listen to anything. That gets you your fun back into music. That gets you, you know, because we don't all want to listen to music to DJ with all the time. That gets you excited again about music. And you spot little tracks that you think, actually, I could probably use that in a DJ set. But anyway, you're just listening to music. And then you're clicking like on stuff. And then once a week, you're listening to all the stuff you've liked. And then you, you've got your DJ hat on. Right, what have I clicked I could actually play in a DJ set? And that way, you're going to be liking tracks that are wider than the stuff that you find by just listening to stuff to DJ with right from the off. But another nice thing happens on the streaming services in that once you start doing that, you don't have to go looking for playlists or looking for albums or looking for artists because the DJ, um, the streaming service will start making lists for you. So on Spotify, it's called Discover Weekly and um, uh, New Releases Radar, I think. Uh, two lists, about five hours of music a week it'll make for you based on what you've liked and what you've listened to. I'm not saying that's all you should be listening to, but there'll be a lot of tracks in there which are going to be up your street uh, and you won't have heard of the artist and you won't have heard of the music. It's the way I discover most of the music for my Balcony Beats live streams, which are effectively radio shows, right? Um, and S, that's what I'd recommend you do. Um, and it doesn't matter what you taste. You say Deep House, Electronic and New Jazz. There's loads of that stuff on Spotify. But equally, you can find uh, stuff on Beatport and so on. Um, in, in roughly the same way it won't build playlists for you and stuff but I, I, I honestly think you'll find everything you want on Spotify um, so I hope that helps uh, we are live it's me Phil here in the Digital DJ Tips Great Outdoors we're in central Portugal uh, but I have uh, even though I'm on holiday clicked on the camera for 45 minutes to talk DJing with you in our normal slot on a Thursday but we will be back at full strength in September with Tuesday tips live and Thursday Q&A live back from the studio if you're wondering why I'm not in the studio. Uh, the next live question is from Max99. Can you get copyrighted for DJ mixes live on YouTube? Yes you can but there's a way around that. So here's the thing if you want to DJ live you want an audience right so wouldn't it be good to do it on Facebook or Instagram? You just can't do it. You're going to get lobbed off immediately. You might even get banned. YouTube is a bit different. YouTube will allow you to DJ with music that it identifies and that the rights holder is cool with you playing on YouTube, which is most new music nowadays. However, it's not all new music. So how do you know? And what happens if you do get... Uh, a track which the copyright owner isn't happy with you to use is that it will um, it will mute the recording in that place uh, and it might even block the whole recording worldwide and it might even throw you off the air while you're doing the DJ. So you don't want that to happen. So here's what you do to fix that. You get all the tracks you want to use in your DJ set. By the way, this is pretty long-winded, but this is the way around it. You get all the tracks you want to use in your DJ set and you drag them into a video editor like uh, movie maker or iMovie or Final Cut Pro or whatever you've got knocking around anything you can make a movie on uh, you drag all the music in and you put a visual there like a picture just a photo will do from your photo library so a photo from your photo library and all the music and you output that as a video uh, the length of the tune so there's 20 tunes you want to play and it's an hour and a half uh, you output an hour and a half video for god's sake do it at a low resolution because that's going to be one big video uh, then you upload that to your YouTube, but you don't publish it. You have it unlisted uh, and you wait. And once YouTube has processed that video, it will tell you which of those tracks have got um, a red mark against them, which will get your live stream uh, banned, basically, or taken off the air or muted or, you know, you don't something will happen you don't want. Uh, most of the tracks that it identifies will have a yellow dot next to them and it will just say you cannot monetize this video. Hey, who cares? Um, so as long as you get a whole line of yellow dots, you're good to go. And if you do get the odd red dot, don't play those tracks. 
So that's a way of kind of like pre-auditioning your tracks in YouTube. It doesn't always work. We have had one incident, I think, in, in the last like 18 months of live streaming on YouTube where we've done this and a track has got, uh, got us in trouble anyway. Uh, but you are very, very, very unlikely to get a copyright strike. Uh, what will happen is you'll just get your video muted or thrown off. Uh, but this is a way to uh, this is a way to check that beforehand. Uh, so I hope that's useful to you, Max, and indeed anyone that we get asked that question so often. I think I'm actually going to write it up and make a little video about it as well to help people. Um, DJ Adam I says, uh, "Don't forget to visit Greece. We will do one day soon. We will do." Um, so someone on Facebook says, "What's the best way to pre-count outro beats and phrases, especially when you're?" live in the mix and without any pre-planning of sets. Well, look, what you're talking about here is the is the knowing where the musical phrases start, right? So a musical phrase, a song's got a beat, right? But it's also got a bar, so it's... Yeah, and my clapping is the first beat of the bar. One, two, three, four. We all hear that instinctively in music, don't we? But then you've got bigger constructions and the bigger constructions will be four bars or eight bars long. Uh, and these are chunks. This could be a verse, a chorus, a breakdown, a drop, um, a big riff in the middle of the track, or whatever. Um, it's, you know, the middle eight in old fashioned kind of like songwriting structures. The middle eight was a bit in the middle where the drummer let rip. Um, indeed, that's where the Amen break came from, which is the, the drum sample that's driven many musical genres and many big hits from... Um, uh, crazy in Love by Beyonce up up to the whole drum and bass genre. It's all the Amen break. That came from the middle eight in a track, uh, in, in a drum track recorded years ago. But the reason it's called a middle eight is it's got eight bars of music, right? So what you're asking, what the question here is, how do I know when I'm approaching a, a section that's, you know, four bars or something or eight bars or something because the best way to, to, to beat mix is to is to not layer the beats and not layer the bars but layer the whole sections so that the first beat of the section lines up with the first beat of the section of the other track as well and then it all hooks together really tightly so two ways of doing this the first way is listen for them because apart from on really minimal techno and house and so on there's generally stuff going on uh, and that stuff will arrive or in the case of the outro beats leave the mix at the beginning of a song section, at the beginning of a four or eight bar section. So, you know, the, the song's playing away, there's a bass line, and then all of a sudden the bass line stops. Well, that's the first bar of, a, of, an eight, uh, uh, of a new section. Um, also, listen out for little fills, little things building up to that one beat. So it might be just chugging along, and then there's a do do do, and that's the one beat, right? Because producers often put a little pre fill, a little bit before the one beat. But another way, and a cheats way of doing it, is if there's a part in your tracks that you already know is a good place to mix out from just stick a cue point on it um, but you know when we used to dj on vinyl we didn't have cue points um, and we had to learn our records by heart well you can't learn 80 records by heart and be right every time so a lot of it was guesswork a lot of it was right we've had a verse we've had a chorus um, at the end of this chorus i'm going to drop the next track in because i know that's the beginning of a song section and, and i can see the needles near the end of the record so if you can see the waveform is near the end of the track and stuff is starting to disappear. The next time you get to the end of a section where things are disappearing, start your track play. Um, Pre, thank you Pre for clicking, uh, being in here. Pre, one of our tutors as well. The reason Serato doesn't have active batch analysis is to prevent folks from overloading or crashing their laptop, which was common during the time the feature was removed. So there we go. That is a common sense reason for that. Uh, this is from Eugene. I've got songs from iTunes years ago that don't show up in Serato. They have a lower bit rate than my other songs. Is there a, a, a fix or do I need to buy them again? They're probably DRM protected songs uh, and they probably uh, therefore won't show in Serato if they're really old. I mean, one way you could fix this was signing up for, what did they, what did Apple call it? Uh, iTunes Match. They had this service called iTunes Match where it basically looked at your music collection and allowed you to log in and listen to that music from anything else like so if it was on your laptop you could suddenly listen to it from your phone the way it did that was by matching up the tracks you've got with another version of them in the cloud but then you could download them from the cloud so uh, you could sign up for itunes match get a load of drm protected music from the years ill-advised Ill drm music years decades ago now 
uh, and you could then download non-DRM versions which would show in your DJ software. Um, and if that's what the issue is, that's what I would do. You, you, you get a better version than a 1 to 8 kilobits per second version that way as well. I don't know if iTunes Match still exists. I, I'm sure it's pretty de deprecated now. I don't think it's something that you hear much said about, but I might be completely wrong there. Uh, but that's probably why they're not showing anyway. Uh, so um, Tim says, when you're creating a pop music set or any genre really, how do you find the hottest tracks? Well, there's no such thing as a hottest track, Tim. Uh, there's a hottest track for the people in front of you right now. If you're playing to an audience that really knows dance music, then you know the biggest dance hits of this week or this month are going to go down really well. If you're playing at a wedding, those same really hot tracks are going to go down like lead balloons because at weddings, you've got to play... You know The biggest hits in a wedding are the stuff that was a hit a year ago, right? So it really depends uh, what the hottest tracks are. Um, if you want to know the hottest tracks in any particular town, uh, one piece of advice I can give you is to go to the Shazam website so if you go, let's do let's do this together. Let's go back to my Safari uh, and let's do this together. So if you go to the Shazam website, and we all know what Shazam is, right? If you go to the Shazam website, uh, it will let you look at what people are Shazamming uh, around the place. So we click on charts uh, and it will load a list of charts. Here's the top 200 right now in Portugal where I am, right? Uh, so if you're playing a gig in Portugal, there you go. But let's say I've got my gig in Lisbon. I can now select Lisbon. Now here's the top 50 tracks right now in Lisbon. So these are the hottest tracks. These are the tracks that people are literally shazamming right now. Uh, so this is a really good way of kind of like cheating to find the hot tracks where you are at the moment. Oh, I didn't show you that. Let me show you now. Sorry, sorry about that, people. Here we go. Right, so I've gone to the Shazam website, right? Uh, and as you can see, um, it's got this charts section here. So at the top of the Shazam web website, there's charts. So I'll go through that again. Here's the top 200 tracks in Lisbon, in Portugal. And I can go down by, like, I go to the city of Lisbon. And this isn't only, like, you can search anywhere you want. So if I wanted to know the top tracks in, uh, in uh, Manchester, my hometown in Manchester in the United Kingdom, I can select United Kingdom. Uh, I can go to Manchester. And then I can drill down in some places to dance. So the biggest dance tracks in Manchester right now, there they are. This is a really, really powerful thing. So I recommend that you use Shazam if you're not sure what the big tracks are generally in an area. Uh, but of course, as I say, it depends upon where you are, who you're playing to uh, and what they consider hot. You know, if a DJ could always know that they can just look at a list to find the hottest tracks, DJing would be quite easy, wouldn't it? Uh, people, we have to go in about one minute. My laptop battery is telling me I have uh, very little time left. We've been on red for a while now. Uh, really do need to get a new battery in this laptop. It's, it's not what it used to be. Uh, but anyway, um, I, I'm just going to set one or two more questions and then get out of here. Um, Roman or Roman says, what experience do you have with the stability of algorithms DJ Pro 2 on Windows? Uh, I would say, honestly, algorithm software is better on Macs and on iOS. I just think it is. I think that's what they program for. So my, my experience is fine because I've never really used it on Windows. But uh, I, I hear a lot more about, uh, you know, their developments on iOS and Mac um, than I do on Windows. So I might be, might be being unfair to algorithm there. But, um, but there we go. That, you asked me on the instantly you asked me instantly for my thinking and that's my thinking uh right one more question people and then i've got to get out of here listen if you've asked your questions on youtube um please just head over and ask the same question on uh our facebook page and my team will answer it there for you uh, afterwards um but if you uh haven't had your question answered just come early next time uh, and ask them right at the beginning and you'll get your questions answered more likely then i'm really sorry i can't answer them all but that's the way it goes people uh, it's very, very busy as ever. Um, this is a good one from Tristan. Let's end off with this one. Uh, Hi, Phil. What are your thoughts on hosting a structured open decks night to give new DJs a chance to play out post-COVID? As I imagine there'll be lots of new DJs looking for exposure. I think it's a brilliant idea. Some of my funniest and most fun nights have been open deck nights. Uh, I remember a very memorable one once in uh, above, a, above a pub. in um, The pub was called The Southern in Chalton in, in Manchester in England. And um, downstairs was a normal pub. Upstairs, they used to have comedy clubs up there and like a function room, but uh, it was taken over and they set some decks up, invited all the DJs from Manchester to come and invited them all to play a 15 minute set. And there was a big school bell that you could ring uh, at the end of their 15 minutes. Uh, and they just had to play uh, whatever they wanted for 15 minutes. It was so much fun to see what people did. Some people just played bangers. Some people played the tracks in the back of their 
record boxes that they hadn't had a chance to play for years and other people went deliberately weird good things so i think it's a great idea tristan i think you should go ahead and do that people i need to uh head out here now this has been your thursday q a live for uh thursday the 29th of july for all of august we're going to be doing these on the road so who knows where we're going to be and where i'm going to be doing them but do come and join me the tuesday tips will be returning on tuesday i think the tuesday actually is the first of september the first tuesday back um, so i'll be back in the studio then uh, and then back in uh, full swing for the autumn term if you like at school but for the next month we're digital dj tips is on semi-holiday so that's why we're out and about in the uh, big wide world here listen people i will see you on tuesday uh, on thursday for thursday q a live and then next sunday for our uh, balcony beats uh, and who knows where i'm going to be for that this sunday it's ben with but with his uh, in my shed uh, we know where he's going to be he's going to be in his shed so do join us then look at your watch now 10 minutes from now is the time to tune in on sundays to watch steve ben or myself uh, djing from wherever we're djing from uh, and uh, kicking back and playing some tunes uh, right people i will see you again uh, this time next week get good get out there make the moments thanks for all your thanks uh, which are coming in uh, and i'll see you again uh, very soon bye bye